It ain't easy being green. Don't go away. Hello friends and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, I'm going to take on a casting that would normally not appeal to me. I'm not a big fan of the 70s red lines and I almost always hate Mattel Tampos. But more and more, the Poison Pinto has been calling my name. There's just something fun about it. So, I've decided to give this very green casting a shot, so let's get to work. Okay, so here I have a 1976 Hot Wheels Redline Poison Pinto. Now, the 70s castings just weren't my cup of tea, and this is normally something I would look right past. But for some reason, the Poison Pinto just kept calling my name. So I tried to find one and I just really couldn't find one for a reasonable price until one day I stumbled on one. And when I got it, I knew immediately I was gonna have to do this car. So let's go ahead and get it apart. So the casting only has one rivet at the front and a little hook at the back to hold it all together. So I'll put a little dab of oil on that rivet and I'll drill it off. And with the help of my trusty little miniature screwdriver, I can go ahead and finally pop the base off the body and we can see what we have. So this casting has some of the usual components. It's got the base, the body, glass, interior. It's also got an interesting set of red lines. Now the front are standard for this year, but the backs are like a modified red line wheel that's sort of like a drag slick. And this is going to prove to be a bigger problem for me than I anticipated. So I'm not totally happy with the workaround. Hey, but we get it done. Interesting decision here by Mattel for the interior in that the front bumper is molded into a chrome interior piece and it actually has to go around and over the post. So when you're taking this out, just use a little caution so you don't break it, but it's got to go over the post and then push forward into a slot in the body. I really think that the favorite part of this entire casting and the thing that really drew me to it is the lime green paint. So I have a special plan for that. So with the car apart and the post drilled out, I can go ahead and tap it and then I'll run a screw in to protect the threads and we can move forward. It's everybody's favorite time of my videos, the warm liquid goo time. So we're going to drop the body into the warm liquid goo and let it do its thing. I ran into a laundry list of other things I had to attend to. So the body actually sat in the warm liquid goo for like four days. And when I pulled it out of the goo, the, the paint was just literally gone, okay? There was no work involved whatsoever. So that was a nice thing. Anyhow, paint's gone. We can go ahead and get to the next step. So I've washed this up, cleaned it, dried it. And 
there's a lot of ways you could go here. You could go with a spectroflame green. You could put the opaque green back on. You could do the decals. You could not do the decals. I'm going to kind of do, I'll call it a resto mod. I'm going to pretty much go straight to what it was, but with a few additional touches. So, a word of warning, okay? The brass bristle brushes and the brass wire brushes for the rotary tools and stuff, those wires come out, and if they're in the rotary tool, they will shoot off hard enough that they will actually stick into your clothes. So make sure you're wearing eye protection. And as to the brush, make sure you're over a work surface when you're doing it, because the other day I got a brass wire from either a, a rotary tool bit or from one of these, I got it stuck in my foot and it hurt, okay? And it was deep, okay? I had to actually pull pretty hard to get it out. So just, just know that these bristles get everywhere and use a little caution when you're dealing with them. Now, my wheels aren't great. And uh, I'm not going to throw these particular ones away because the rears are very unique. Um, they're like a big mag wheel back there, or a, not, a, a, not a mag wheel, but more like a drag slick. So very unusual. I'm going to save them. But that leaves me in a position of trying to figure out what am I going to put on here. I don't think anybody is selling aftermarket Hot Wheels Redline wheels that have like a drag slick in the back. So I'm going to have to figure something out. Anyhow, I just pop the axles off and I'll put those aside and we can figure out what we're going to do in a bit. So with the wheels on hold for the moment, I can head over to the paint booth. And I'm going to begin this paint job by using some Tamiya Fine Primer in white. Now that's crucial that I'm using the white primer here because it's going to help make my paint job really explode. If I use the gray, it's going to tone this down and that's absolutely not what I want. All right, so we've got the casting coated in the Tamiya primer and we can let that dry. And now we can turn our attention to the paint that I'm gonna use. The Redline Shop offers a unique set of opaque colored paints. I'm going to be using Competition Green here. It's really close to what was on the original car, but at this point I still have never used this paint before and I had no idea how good this is going to come out, but I'm going to tell you, this paint is going to work magnificently. So one thing I noticed about the paint is it does separate. So you're going to need to make sure that you shake this really, really thoroughly before you use it. Now also, I didn't see any information that said to or not to use the hardener. So I'm using the paint and some of the hardener I use with the Spectra Flame colors, and I'm mixing that together. And it's actually going to work out fine. I don't know if that's the right procedure or not, but it ends up being perfect. So, hey, go for it. So I'll lay the paint down as I always do, starting with some tack coats and then medium coats. And then I'm going to lay on the wet coats. Now, having not used this paint before, I didn't know what to expect but it really laid down very nicely. It smoothed out beautifully. Um, you know, it wasn't too thin so that it, you know, it would puddle in corners and stuff like that. It was actually perfect. And I think I'm gonna have to order some more of this paint in some of the different colors because if they all come out like the competition green did, then this stuff is fantastic. So once this fantastic paint is dry, I can go ahead and put on the decals. 
Now I got these on eBay from Second Chance Red Lines, and I'm going to tell you, these are a set of the nicest decals I've gotten since I've started this whole thing. Okay, these are beautiful. The colors are vibrant. They were perfectly sized. Fan flipping fantastic okay second chance red lines i don't know how all his decals are if they're all this good but i do know this the poison pinto decals he's selling are absolutely perfect So, with the decals on and some setting solution applied, I let that just naturally dry. Then I put the decaled car on the heating lamp to kind of take away some of the additional moisture. And then I, on top of that, I left it for 24 hours before heading over to the paint booth to put down my Bright Vision clear coat. It's funny because when you're putting this clear coat on, if you're doing it right with the tack coats, you're going to kind of get a, a matte finish over the entire car in the first couple passes. It's not until the medium coats and especially the wet coats that you get this beautiful, wonderful, thick, glossy finish. So there's always that little moment where you're worrying and thinking to yourself, man, I hope I didn't just kill this. Well, you know, I was thinking that. But as the clear started to build and it started to smooth out, I literally went insane here, okay? I could see just how fantastic this thing was coming out. And at this point now, I'm just hoping I don't do something to screw it up as I go forward. So I really wanted red line replacement wheels for this vehicle, but to my knowledge, nobody is making a Redline Racing Slick like was on this casting. So I dug through a lot of different cars looking at wheels. Some were too big, some were too small, some just didn't look right. And I finally found the Bone Shaker. The Bone Shaker has this Racing Slick wheel on it, but no Redline. So I made that decision. Even though this was a redline car, it now is not going to have redline wheels. Now, because it's held together with a screw, I can always change that if I find some good wheels for it later. Um, but, you know, this is the closest thing I could come up with. It was a, a balancing act. Do I get the original looking wheel without the redline, or do I get a redline on a wheel that doesn't look anything like the original? And this is the choice that I made you may do it differently and that's cool but this worked out great because they were able to just pop right in they fit exactly I didn't have to alter anything I just had to snap them back into place and we were in business so things are going really well and it's time to start to pay a little bit of attention to the minutia of this build starting with the glass. I'm gonna break out a Q-tip and my flits and I'm gonna hand polish this thing up because I'm gonna wanna clean it and I've got other parts to clean so I'll do those all at the same time. So first, we polish the windshield. Buff the flits in, rub it all off and the windshield will look great. So I'm feeling it with the windshield, and so I'm going to go ahead and take it, the base, and the interior. I'm going to take them to my ultrasonic cleaner, drop them in for a little bit, let it do its thing. Then we can bring those back and do a little more work on those things.
So with the window thoroughly dry, I can now go ahead and dip that in the gauzy. And this window tried to play a little trick on me. You know, it, if, the way it looks when it's out of the car, you think it's a windshield and two side windows. And I'm, I don't know. I must have just had a brain fart or something or gone to the Bahamas for a minute. Because all you really need to do is dip the front little windshield part in there. So you just plunk it in, set it aside to dry in your onion saver, and you're good to go. But it sure does look like it. Maybe it, maybe it's also usable for other castings. I don't know. Uh, maybe those pieces are just to hold it in place right. I really don't know. But it tried to trick me. So anyhow, all you got to do is dip the windshield and put it aside, which I did. We'll leave that until we're ready to put this thing back together. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on the base. Now the base had some gouges in it, so I filed those out briefly just to smooth everything out. And because of that, I'm now going to just repaint the entire base using a little Tamiya flat black. Um, I'm not really going to do anything else to the base. It doesn't need it in my book. Okay, so with the rest of the interior dry, now I can turn my attention to the motor. And I want to give it a little bit of realism, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my Tamiya panel liner, and I'm going to dab it in some of the grooves and slots around the engine to give it some life. And then I'm going to take a very small brush, and I'm going to paint in the fan belt with flat black paint. And then the Piestal Resistance, is I'm going to use a little of that competition green and paint the very top by the intakes of the engine that that beautiful green should really set things apart
So I already told you about the bone shaker wheels and I've drilled apart a bone shaker and stolen its wheels and I told you that they'll just pop right in there. They're a perfect fit here. Um, and all you got to do is just kind of take a little blade of a screwdriver and just push on the axle enough for it to click into place and you're done instantly. It looks great. So I have all my parts and pieces, everything is looking fantastic, and all i got to do is stick this thing back together. And a couple notes here. Alright, first of all, the windshield has to be attached to the interior before you put the interior into the body. They, they don't go together otherwise, okay? So there's a little notch, and you just kind of press fit it together. That's the first note. The second note is remember that grill insert. It has to go over the post, so you slide it over the post and then push the whole interior forward to seat that into the slot in the casting. So we're just about ready to wrap this thing up. All it needs now is a little button head screw to lock it all together, and we can call this Poison Pinto done. So let's take a quick look and see what we've done. I really hope you love it as much as I do. <coughs> surprise 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 not only did i have fun here this is now one of my all-time favorite restos i love the look of this and boy the opaque green paint from the redline shop was a dream to work with this car literally glows i guess this casting just goes to show preconceived notions can keep you from finding new and happy experiences you need to open up your mind. I hope you love this video. If so, please give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my diecast builds. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear how you feel about 70s red lines. Well, that's it for today. Always keep an open mind. It's the only way new things can get in. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good. 